And while we're on the subject of Southeast Asia, where something very interesting has recently rocked the world of archaeology. It's another Gobekli Tepe, if you like. It is, it is a piece of hard evidence that is rewriting history. He says it's a strong case, but not an easy case. We're up against the world's belief. Nan Madol, often dubbed the Venice of the Pacific, is a captivating archaeological site located off the southeast coast of Pohnpei in the Federated States of Micronesia. This complex of artificial islands linked by a network of canals stands as a testament to the engineering marvel of ancient Pacific Island civilization. The historical context and discovery of Nan Madol stretch through several phases, from early European documentation to extensive scientific studies unraveling the mysteries of this mysterious site. The first known European to document Nan Madol was Fyodor Litka, a Russian navigator and explorer. During his 1828 voyage in the Pacific, part of a broader Russian initiative to explore and understand the region, Litka encountered the massive stone ruins on a series of artificial islets. He described them as an engineering feat unparalleled in the Pacific Islands. Nan Madol's location off Pohnpei made it a significant discovery, highlighting a site that reflected extensive knowledge and influence across the Pacific Ocean during that era. The real focus on Nan Madol's archaeological significance began with the German colonial administration's takeover of the Caroline Islands. This period marked the start of more focused archaeological attention directed toward the site. Throughout the 20th century, numerous archaeologists from various countries, including the United States, Japan and local Micronesian scholars, conducted in-depth investigations. These efforts aim to decode the secrets of the site's construction, its purpose, and the society that built it. Researchers delved into the architecture, artifacts, and human remains found across the approximately 92 artificial islets, seeking insights into the social structure, religious practices, and daily life of its past inhabitants. This detailed archaeological work, which began earnestly in the early 1900s, continues into the 21st century, striving to document and preserve this unique cultural heritage site and understand the development of complex societies in the Pacific. In recent years, the Japanese government has stepped in to assist financially with the preservation and study of Nan Madol, recognizing its regional heritage and historical significance. This contribution underscores the site's importance and aids in ongoing research and conservation efforts. Moreover, in 2016, Nan Madol was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, bringing international attention and resources to its preservation efforts. This designation has been pivotal in enhancing the site's management and conservation, ensuring that Nan Madol remains preserved for future generations. The involvement of local scholars and the Pohnpeian community has been crucial in bridging the gap between past and present. Their knowledge of oral histories and traditional practices has enriched the archaeological data, providing a deeper understanding of Nan Madol's historical and cultural context. This local engagement not only supports scientific inquiry, but also ensures that the heritage of Nan Madol continues to be a living part of the community's identity and history. One of the most thought-provoking and mysterious aspects of Nan Madol is the legend surrounding its construction, particularly the origin story of the Sordelur dynasty. According to local Ponpayan folklore, the founders of Nan Madol were two brothers, Olosopa and Olosipa, who came from somewhere in the west or northwest, guided by a flying dragon. These brothers were not just ordinary men, but were skilled in sorcery and possessed the mystical ability to command spirits and elements. The brothers initially sought to build an altar on Pohnpei to worship Nanison, the god of agriculture, by using a massive floating stone brought from another island. After several failed attempts and the death of the elder brother Olosopa, the younger brother Olosipa succeeded in creating Nan Madol by magically flying in the huge basalt stones and commanding them to stack themselves. This narrative infuses the site with a deep mystical significance, suggesting that the city was more than a political and ceremonial center, but also a place imbued with supernatural power. This legend raises provocative questions about the intersection of mythology and technology in ancient societies. How did such stories influence the construction and organization of Nan Madol? Were these legends an attempt to rationalize the extraordinary engineering feats achieved with the resources and knowledge available at the time? Or do they point to something deeper? 
Building on our previous discussion of Nan Madol's history, it's equally fascinating to delve into the architectural and engineering feats that define this ancient marvel. Nan Madol's construction not only displays extraordinary prehistoric engineering prowess, but also aligns with the complexities seen in some of the most famous ancient sites worldwide. The design and execution demonstrate a sophisticated knowledge of architecture, logistics and natural resource management that is impressive even by contemporary standards. The engineering challenges began with establishing a stable foundation directly on coral reefs, a challenging environment due to the soft, unstable substrate and exposure to tidal fluctuations. To overcome these challenges, builders constructed nearly 100 artificial islets across more than 200 acres, meticulously positioning huge stones on the shallow reef to withstand the forces of the ocean. The primary building material was columnar basalt, chosen for its natural, pillar-like formation. The largest of these stones could measure up to 7.5 meters in length and weigh up to 50 tons, roughly the equivalent of a fully loaded tractor trailer or a large modern tank, the total volume of basalt and coral fill used in creating the islets is estimated to be in the hundreds of thousands of cubic meters. Transporting and positioning such immense volumes required not only significant labor but also precise planning. One of the site's greatest mysteries is how these massive basalt logs were moved several kilometers without the use of wheels, a technology not known to exist in prehistoric Micronesian cultures. An interesting theory suggests that the builders might have utilized the buoyant properties of bamboo rafts to float these massive stones across the lagoon, a method that would have alleviated weight issues and provided a feasible means to transport heavy loads across water. The construction of Nan Madol shares some intriguing parallels with other monumental projects like the Great Wall of China, which also required adapting construction techniques to challenging environments. Both the Great Wall and Nan Madol showcase the ingenuity of their respective builders in using available materials and innovative methods to overcome environmental challenges. Another fascinating theory about Nan Madol involves the potential use of a natural cement or geopolymer, similar to methods speculated to have been used in the construction of the Egyptian pyramids. While there is no direct evidence for this at Nan Madol, the precision fit of the stones suggests that some form of binding agent might have been employed to secure the structures against the forces of the tide. As previously mentioned, Nan Madol was meticulously planned as a series of approximately 100 artificial islets spread across more than 200 acres of a tidal lagoon. These islets were connected by a network of canals serving dual purposes. They facilitated transportation across the city and acted as defensive barriers against potential invaders. This strategic use of the aquatic environment for defense can be likened to ancient moated structures but executed on a far grander scale. Each islet was clearly differentiated by function, with distinct zones for the elite commoners and ceremonial activities, reflecting a highly stratified society where social status dictated spatial occupation within the urban layout. The elite's residences were strategically placed to offer both privacy and protection, often located on the more central islets which were better defended and closer to the ceremonial centers. These areas featured larger structures and more elaborate basalt log constructions. The ceremonial islets, particularly those like Nandoas, were the focal points of the city. Nandoas itself is an engineering marvel, featuring walls over 8 meters high and 5 meters thick, constructed entirely from huge basalt logs. These logs were fitted together without mortar, relying on their massive weight and the puzzle-like fit of their hexagonal shapes to create stability. Nanduas housed the tombs of the Sordala rulers, making it a key place of power and significance. The design of Nanduas suggests that it served not only as a tomb area, but possibly also as a site for major ceremonial gatherings and the enactment of important rituals, which reinforced the rulers' divine status and their control over society. Comparing Nan Madol with other ancient constructions offers interesting insights. While the Egyptian pyramids were monumental sites built on solid land using a massive workforce and resources from a large centralized state, Nan Madol's construction required ingenious adaptations to a fluid and challenging marine environment. Yet, both sites demonstrate the capacity of ancient societies to mobilize and manage large-scale resources over generations. The strategic use of water in Nan Madol's design is also reminiscent of medieval European castles with moats, which used water as a natural defensive barrier to protect against sieges. 
albeit in very different contexts. The use of naturally hexagonal columnar basalt at Nan Madol not only facilitated the physical construction process, but also enhanced the structural integrity of the buildings. This choice of material and the method of construction likely contributed to the site's longevity, as these stones interlock naturally, creating a more resilient structure against natural elements, especially in a saltwater environment.